Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. And in this video, I just quickly want to talk about a very common mistake people do with coroutines. And this mistake can really lead to very bad performance in your app. And it's not only really a mistake, but rather a big misunderstanding of how coroutines work. So let's take a look at what I mean. So very often you have something like this, a retrofit API, just a normal get request, for example, uh, for getting a user here. And then you might have a user repository where you do something like this. You get a user by its ID, returns a result, and then you return with context dispatches IO because that's obviously an IO operation. And here you call that retrofit function. If everything went well, you return a successful result. If there's some form of exception, you return a failure. So what is wrong here? The big misunderstanding lies in this line here. People think they always need to switch the coroutine context when they use a certain suspend function. And while that itself here won't lead to a bug, it won't lead to any performance issues, it's really only an extra line of code, which itself is not that bad. But the root of this problem of doing this, of having this with context block here at this place, is a big misunderstanding of how coroutines work. Because at this point, this get user function, which comes from retrofit, will switch the context to the right dispatcher. So you don't need to do this on your own. But how do you really know that? Which function already does that behind the scenes? Because there is a core rule when it comes to implementing functionality that itself is blocking, but not yet suspending. And you want to bring that into a suspending function, into suspending context. That core rule is that you design that function for so-called main safety. Main safety means that it should be safe to call your suspend function from any threat, but especially from the main threat. So it shouldn't matter if your suspend function makes an API request, if it makes a database query, if there is just a long running and very CPU happy task, it really shouldn't matter from which threat or from which coroutine dispatcher you call this function. That is what main safety means. But let's bring this into a context where we can really all understand what this really means and when you need to take a look at main safety. And for that, I've prepared this file reader class. This file reader is just a class which will read a file from our assets folder. So it just exposes the suspend function, read file as bytes, we pass in the file name, and then we get back a byte array after that file was read. And to do that, we can simply use our context, refer to the assets, open the file with the corresponding file name, and use will just open the input stream so we can really read the bytes from that file and finally return these. And you now want with the suspend keyword that you can call this function in a normal coroutine and that coroutine will suspend until reading that file finished. Then in this case, if you have your code like I do here, you violated the principle of allowing main safety. And NR Studio even already gives you a little hint here that the suspend keyword is grayed out because that effectively does not do anything here. The suspend keyword only makes sense if you also have suspending calls inside of the suspend function. Well, right now we don't have any suspending calls, which we would see here at these icons on the left, like here in user repository. If there is such an arrow, then you know at this line there is a suspending function, so with context is one and get user is also one. But here we don't have that. However, just because something is not a suspend function does not mean that it's not a blocking function. The best example for this would be threat.sleep, um, which you can use to make the current threat sleep for one second in this case, and this will completely block the current threat. And this will also block the current threat if you execute that from within a suspend function. However, the coroutine won't suspend while that happens. And the same way in this function, the coroutine won't suspend when reading that file, even though that is something that can take a little moment. So what you would need to do here instead is, at this point, the with context block would be totally needed. So here we would want to have the with, whoops, with context, this patches IO, because reading a file is obviously an IO operation. And then in here you could have this and suddenly the suspend keyword is not grayed out anymore. Because now on the one hand, this function will suspend until reading this file is finished. So we get the normal coroutine behavior. And on the other hand, we prevent that it will block the underlying threat. So if we just do it like this and we don't have this with context block, and we execute this from the main dispatcher inside of a coroutine, then that means this function will block the actual main threat, so our UI threat, which is definitely noticeable if we read in a large file here. So to quickly show you that as well, let's have a return statement, do it wrong. And for that, I prepared a little 100 megabytes 
test file, which I just want to read in. And in our main activity, I also prepared a little infinite transition. So it's really nothing else than an animation that allows us to infinitely rotate our red box here. And then after a delay of three seconds, we call this function read file as bytes. So we read in our 100 megabytes file. And even though, as you can see, this is a suspend function, we have to execute this from within a coroutine, you will see something interesting. So let's run this, take a look here. You can see animation is fluently, but then after three seconds, ah, there was a little lag in the animation. And this will be even more significant if we just read in that file multiple times. So just for a little demo, or I in, let's say, one, two, five. If we read five of such files and launch this again, take a look here until it's relaunched. There we go, wait three seconds, and then you will see, okay, it's completely lagged here in our animation. But let's now understand why this happens and why this won't happen. Well, let's actually do it again. Why this won't happen if we surround this with a width context block. So do it like this. Now, if we switch the context to the IO dispatcher and make this a real suspend function with a suspending function that uh, is called in here. And if we now relaunch this, take a look here, then even though we read, read in five of these files directly on the main dispatcher, as you can see here, so launch defect, this coroutine scope here will just be launched on the main dispatcher by default. Even though that is the case, we won't experience any lag here because our read file as bytes function switches the dispatcher to the right one. And even if it would switch to the main dispatcher, this would not be a blocking, uh, blocking function here since it would still be executed inside of an independent coroutine. So with context effectively avoids that the blocking but non-suspending code here, like reading such a file, will not block the underlying threat, so the whole threat. Instead, with, with context, it will only block the corresponding coroutine, which can be completely independent of the underlying threat. So now just to summarize what main safety means and when you need with context and when you rather don't need with context, like here. So here you would be totally fine with just calling the try and catch block like that. So the responsibility of switching to the right dispatcher always lies at the function which executes the blocking code, which is not suspending yet. This function here does not execute blocking code, which is not suspending. It executes blocking code here with get user, but that is already suspending. So this function does not have any re responsibility to switch to the right dispatcher. It would actually be retrofit here where the responsibility would lie. And retrofit might call some OKHTP OK code under the hood, which does not expose any suspend functions. So retrofit would need this with context block under the hood. So it's really safe to call this get user function from the main dispatcher, from the IO dispatcher. It should really not matter. On the other hand, in our file reader, here that is really needed because without this with context block, there are zero suspend functions inside of this function, even though we have a blocking function here, which is this open function. So again, if you have blocking but non-suspending code, this function is blocking, non-suspending, otherwise we would have an error here, then you need to surround this with with context. Otherwise, you will really risk your app's performance if you execute such a fake suspend function, let's call it like that, on the main dispatcher. And on the other hand, if you have a suspend function which just executes other suspend functions, and besides that, not really blocking code, then you're totally fine not switching the context. Because each single suspend function should do that on its own. Because each single suspend function should do that on its own at the lowest level where it only executes blocking but non-suspending calls. So I hope that really got clear. It's a complicated topic, but it's uh, quite important. And if you feel like there might be more of such mistakes you might be doing in your code, which harm your app's performance, your app's architecture, and your app's readability, then it might be something that we work together very closely and we will take a look at your code. Because that is exactly what I offer in my 10-week mentorship program. If that sounds good to you, you will find all further details down below in this video's description, where you can also apply for this program. Other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.